Uh, today, I, I want to talk about an important topic in electrical engineering design, which is the capacitor bank sizing and selection. As usual, I will try to go away from uh, theory, the deep theoretical aspect of things, because we want to concentrate on the practical side of uh, the electrical engineering and which will be more beneficial for everyone in the daily uh, life of an engineer in any company or in any field. So uh, I, I will start with simple theory because we need a simple theory uh, and theoretical understanding of the things before we go into the practical uh, aspect. But I will try to make it as brief as possible and straight to the point. So why do we need capacitor banks? In order to understand the purpose and advantages of using capacitor banks, first of all we need to have a brief and fundamental understanding of the power factor. So if we know what is a power factor and what what does it do if it goes uh, if it's increased or decreased, then we will come to know why do we need capacitor banks and what are the advantages of using them? So, a very simple analogy for understanding the power factor is if you think of the energy being uh, used in any power distribution system as a coffee cup. So, you, you can see here clearly there is a coffee cup. Imagine a cup of cappuccino or any uh, type of coffee that is divided between coffee, liquid, and froth. So uh, the, mo uh, you, the coffee part is the real power being used or this is the useful part of the power that is being used by the system uh, to perform the, the required uh, task. And the froth is the reactive power which is the part of energy that is being lost. So the sum of them, real power plus reactive power, is the total apparent power. So this full cup is the total apparent power. The power factor is the ratio of the real power to reactive power. So it's in, in one sense the efficiency, you can think of it as the efficiency of a power distribution system. The more real power you have in a system, the higher the power factor, the higher your power, absorbed power, is being utilized by the system. The less power factor, which means less efficiency in the power distribution in a system, the more wasted power, reactive power or froth in this case, the more power is being wasted in a system. This power that's being wasted is can be wasted in many forms it can be in the form of heat energy or in other forms so this is a very simple understanding of the power factor it's in in its most basic uh, form the efficiency of power distribution in an electrical system so now that we understand the power factor in a practical sense let's go to advantages of improving the power factor mainly of course using capacitor banks on a power distribution system what are the advantages of improving the power factor what are the practical advantages of improving the power factor in a system so what do we gain from this advantages of improving the power factor mainly you start you will correct the phase lag that is caused by inductive loads. So inductive loads in a system take many forms such as uh, electrical motors, such as uh, the ele electronic components, and any component that has a, a, a transformer or any type of inductive load. This will affect the power distribution quality. So there will be a phase lag between current and voltage. You want to improve this phase lag. You want to bring it as close as possible to unity. So improving the power factor ensures maximum utilization of the consumed power. 
as we said earlier whenever we improve the power factor we are actually utilizing the power in its, in its most efficient form so improving the power factor also reduces utility billing since we are uh, consuming energy efficiently our utility billing will be improved and it will be uh, reduced in many aspects since we are actually paying for the energy which we are consuming uh, improving the power factor also reduces the stress on electrical components and insulation due to wasted power one form of this energy wastage is heat so when we are improving the power factor when we have an efficient power distribution system less energy will be wasted in the form of heat let's say one form of energy wastage is heat which is the major uh, energy loss uh, factor which will reduce uh, uh, as a result the stress on electrical components such as conductors such as the electrical uh, insulation uh, stress on many uh, sides of the electrical distribution system it will be reduced so this will help uh, uh, in, increase the life the lifetime of of certain components and make it much more uh, uh, let's say long lasting uh, power distribution system and last but not least it enables optimizing the electrical power distribution component sizes how is this when you have an efficient power factor a high power factor you will be able to optimize the uh, sizing of several components since power factor is uh, the the current formula uh, is dependent on the power factor so when the power factor will increase the actual the the consumed current the current flowing will decrease therefore you can uh, you can uh, size the let's say cables uh, efficiently you can uh, provide uh, less uh, uh, cable uh, sizes for the same uh, load and uh, perhaps you can provide more efficient breaker sizing uh, this will help you also in your voltage drop calculation when you are because when we are sizing the cables we are uh, taking the power factor into consideration to calculate the loaded current so when I have an efficient power factor I will be able to provide more efficient cable size since uh, this will be uh, providing uh, uh, less current for the same load uh, it, at the same time also when we are calculating the voltage drop for the bus bar let's say so uh, it will enable me to uh, optimize the uh, perhaps the uh, bus bar rating uh, so you can see it has many advantages the power factor these are actually some of the uh, main uh, advantages this is one of the main purposes of using a, a capacitor bank uh, and uh, one of the main advantages of improving the uh, power factor so how do we actually uh, calculate the capacitor bank the required capacitor bank size for a certain system or let's say for a certain uh, panel an efficient, uh, an efficient power factor rating, let's say, uh, let's refer to the DEWA regulation, local DEWA regulation should be above 0 0.9. So any rating, any uh, power factor rating above 0 0.9 is considered to be an efficient system as per the local DEWA regulation and any uh, distribution system should have always a power factor of above 0 0.9 which means 90% you are utilizing the useful power you have more than 90% efficiency so you can start from sizing your calculating your capacitor bank calculation to be 0 0.91 let's say uh, typically uh, we are we prefer it to be uh, 0 0.95 but you have the depending on the project depending on the specifications on the client requirement the consultant requirements usually you are between the range of 0 0.91 to 0 0.95 this is your target during 
capacitor bank sizing calculation. So the capacitor bank is connected to the LV panel. This LV panel, all the downstream loads will be the, the power quality or the power factor for all the downstream loads from this LV panel will be uh, uh, compensated using this capacitor bank which is connected to the LV panel. So you connect, you calculate the load connected to the LV panel, then you apply the formulas uh, on this total load. So main formula that is used, this is the, uh, the, the summarized formula and I prefer always to use straightforward formula without going through all the steps of extracting this formula. Uh, uh, easily you can uh, uh, perform the calculation, let's say the required KVAR rating, the KVAR of course the rating of the, uh, K, uh, the capacitor bank is in KVAR, reactive power equal the total load that you have, usually we are using the demand load. Some Times in some projects uh, we might use the connected load, but this will give a very oversized capacitor bank. We always uh, prefer to use the demand load. So the total load connected to this LV panel into tangent, the first angle, phi 1, let's call it, minus tangent phi 2. What is this angle? This angle is calculated by taking the cosine inverse of the power factor before correction. So we assume a certain power factor. We assume a certain worst case power factor, let's say 0.75, let's say 0.8, that this will be our uh, worst case scenario at any instant of time. This is what we want to correct. So you can say, I will assume a worst case scenario of 0.75 power factor. Then I need to improve this 0.75 to be 0.91, for example, or 0.95. So in this case, for example, how we will find this angle, we will take the cosine inverse of our worst case power factor. You will see now we will come to a practical example, which will help you understand it in a more uh, solid uh, manner. So cosine inverse, let's say 0.75, for example, it will give you this angle. You substitute it here. Then the second angle is the angle which is calculated by taking the cosine inverse of the power factor after correction. So this is our target our target power factor, which we have mentioned earlier. You can start by 0.91 up to 0.95 even more if you want but usually our uh, uh, optimum uh, target is 0.95 so i will go now to the practical example which will help you understand how this calculation is performed in the daily practical uh, sense so here you can see a practical example of a capacitor bank sizing calculation so I will start here by substituting the maximum demand load so here I have a maximum demand load of 702 kilowatts this is the MDL or maximum demand load so I have an assumed power factor in this case of 0.8 so this is my assumed worst case power factor. So you can you can say 0.75, you can say 0.8. This depending on your project, depending on your specifications, if the if anything is specified there. But usually I go with 0.75 or 0.8 in in some cases. So this is an assumed worst case scenario power factor. Then you go you need to know what is your target power factor as we mentioned 0.91 up to 0.95 in this example it's 0.95 so i take the cosine inverse of both angles this is my worst case power factor cosine inverse 0.8 it will give me 0.64 and this is my target power factor actually it's mentioned here 0.9 but it should be 0.95 this is a mistake, typing mistake. This 0.95, I will substitute it here. As you can see here, 0.95. I 
So cosine inverse 0 0.95 should give me 0 0.32. So what I will do then, I will substitute it. I will substitute these values. I will substitute these two in our earlier formula, which was tangent, then cosine inverse 0 0.8 minus tangent cosine inverse 0 0.95. It's actually the same. If you take tangent, you open the bracket and cosine inverse 0 0.8 minus cosine inverse 0 0.95, or you do it in this sense, it will be the same. So all this is done to calculate our multiplication factor, which we need to multiply in order to obtain the required capacitor bank rating. So this will not give me the KVAR rating, but this is done to uh, uh, obtain the multiplication factor, which will ultimately give me the enable me to calculate the capacitor bank rating. So here I reach to a factor of 0 0.42. I take this 0 0.42 the multiplication factor multiplied by the maximum demand load which is 702 in this case then I will reach to the minimum required capacitor bank rating in order to achieve the target power factor so in this case I have 296 kVar our selected capacitor bank rating is 300 kVar usually we are going in the steps of 25 kvar so let's say i have a 280 i will go with 300 kvar let's say i have 290 i will go with 300 kvar for example let's say the result of my calculation was 310 usually we will go with 325 kvar so this is the calculation in a brief a very straightforward calculation which is usually the case that we use it to obtain the required capacitor bank rating in any project uh, I, I will quickly go through it again the maximum demand you take the maximum demand then you have an assumed power factor and you have the target power factor you substitute the values here in the formula straightforward formula this will give you a multiplication factor this is a multiplication factor which you multiply by the maximum demand load and finally you reach to your minimum required capacitor bank rating which will so what's the what this rating means this is the capacitor bank that i have to use in order to maintain my system at a power factor of 0.95 in a worst case scenario if it will drop up to 0.8 so that's it everyone thank you for watching and please support me by liking the video and sharing it with your colleagues perhaps also if you can register to my channel thank you very much